It's Trin Stevenson, Conservative MEP for Scotland. What do you make of this deal that's finally been reached in London on, on mackerel? Well, after four years of mackerel war, obviously I think this is a, a breakthrough and I congratulate particularly the sector, particularly Ian Gatt, who has been negotiating on behalf of the pelagic fishery in Scotland, you know, because this has been a, a war of attrition against a lot of provocation from Iceland, the Faroes, and now Greenland, who have all been fishing illegally, and we mustn't forget that. So while this trilateral agreement between uh, Norway, EU, and Faroes is a breakthrough, it is shocking, really, that Iceland walked out of this. Now, we've set aside 15.6% of the attack in case we can attract Iceland and Russia to come back to the table. That's been set aside for them, which in my view is overly generous. But we at least have achieved an agreement with the Faroes, giving them 12.6%, which I also think is overly generous, but it provides us with a coastal states agreement now for five years and brings some stability to the sector. So some stability to the sector. You say overly generous for Faroes and potentially for Iceland. Do you think Iceland will now follow suit, be tempted uh, to, to, to join the deal even though they haven't um, joined it yet? Well, you know, we have taken an almost unanimous decision in the European Parliament to apply sanctions, really tough sanctions against Iceland. So the gun is pointing at their head. Either they accept what I believe is a really generous deal on the table now, or we slam sanctions on them and we really hit them with a, a, a real heavy punch. What about then for Scotland? What does this deal uh, represent for the Scottish fleet? Well, there is a problem. Norway and the EU now get just over 70% of the overall total allowable catch for all Northeast Atlantic mackerel. Now that's considerably less than we had when this mackerel war started four years ago. The only reason we are going now to land a bigger catch is because the scientists tell us that the stock is very healthy and they have told us that the total catch allowable for uh, this year is going to be 1.2 million tonnes. Now that is double what it was four years ago when this mackerel war started. My fear is that if we suddenly find the science changing and they tell us, for instance, next year that we're back to 500,000 tonnes instead of 1.2 million tonnes, we are going to suffer. I mean, giving 12.6% to Faroes, potentially 15.6% to uh, Iceland and, and Russia, Greenland stealing 100,000 tonnes, I mean, there will be nothing left and our mackerel fishery in Scotland would literally collapse. This is the danger. So this year, it's good news, we are going to be landing more mackerel. We're going to see a big improvement in our catch, but the danger lies if the science changes. And that's where I think the Commission have been overly generous in what they have offered. How realistic, how um, much of a, re a real threat is that the uh, Faroe Islands and Iceland have of course been uh, catching way, way more than, than was allowed in previous years for the last four years now, and yet the science st strangely seems to suggest that the, the stock is doing okay. Uh, how big a danger is it that uh, Scottish fishermen could be in for a cut in future years? Well, Mother Nature has a nasty habit of turning around and slapping you in the face with a wet fish, and in this case it could be with a wet North East Atlantic mackerel. If that happens, uh, the red danger signs are going to be flashing. I mean, remember four years ago we had a 540,000 uh, 540, tonne total catch. That has relentlessly uh, improved because the scientists tell us that the spawning stock biomass, the ability of the stock to recreate itself, to reproduce, has kept increasing against all the odds with uh, both the Faroes and Iceland taking 150,000 tonnes each illegally and now Greenland joining the fray following their example, take 100,000 tonnes. So there's 350,000 tonnes gone at a stroke. And all that's left 
then is, is to be shared out between uh, Russia, Norway and the EU. Well, that's fine when you've got 1.2 million tonnes to share, but that's disastrous if we end up back at 500,000 tonnes, and that is my fear about the outcome of this agreement. Just a quick word then on, on the, the kind of logistics, because those talks are, are now underway, I understand, from, from today, that uh, uh, fishermen from places like Scotland getting access to Faroese water, Faroese fishermen getting access to um, Scottish waters, to EU waters. Is that all kind of more rudimentary um, technical stuff that can be sorted out? Uh, in other words, does it look like we're finally at an end uh, to, to this uh, macro crisis? Well, for four years, you know, we've had a complete standoff between us and the Faroe Islands. Uh, that now will come to an end. It also paves the way now for an agreement on whitefish, which is vitally important for the Scottish fleet, between uh, the EU and Norway, so that we can get access to Norwegian waters to catch whitefish, and they can get access to European waters. Even that was being held in abeyance since last December because of uh, the problem over mackerel and all the, the other uh, issues that uh, underline that. Iceland, because they walked away from these talks, they will not get any access to EU waters. But likewise, we won't get any access to Icelandic waters. That's why it's important that we bring them to the table, get them to accept this agreement, and then we can take punitive action against Greenland if they are still acting in this uh, illegal way.